Mm. Hey, fellas. Welcome back to another exciting build here at Prime Model Works headquarters. I know I haven't put out too many videos in the last few weeks. I've been busy with some family stuff and um, some issues that came up there. And then uh, just kind of build a couple of kits on my own, just, you know, just to get back to building and and just enjoying it. Not that I don't enjoy putting out videos, but it is kind of nice sometimes just to to do away with the, the video camera and just build for the fun of it. And uh, one of them that I built was Revels 132nd scale uh, F15, supposed to be an E, but it's more like a B. So I built the, uh, the Rebel one there, you see right above my head, it's hanging up. And uh, built that one and hung it up on the ceiling and it's just, I kind of enjoyed the build, so. Um, but this video, I'm going to tackle Ming's 148th scale F35A. Now I've never built uh, the F35 and I've never actually built a main kit that I can think of. Now I am doing this one in flight on a base so I'm, I'm, um, I'm not going to be focusing a lot on the build part. It does seem to be a pretty easy kit to put together. There's, um, but since I am doing it in flight, I'm not putting a lot of the stuff in there like the, uh, the wheel bays, obviously. Uh, I'm not going to open up the missile bay, so it's just going to be a shell and um, the outside of the plane. I am putting a pilot in it. The kit doesn't come with a pilot, so uh, I've had to drag one out of another kit, and I've got him put together, and I know his helmet's not going to be correct. I may fix that. I may not. I may try to add that little thing above it. I think the F-35 pilots have the, a different helmet, but I don't know. We'll see. I don't know that you'll be able to notice that much or if it's even that big of a deal. But, um, but anyway, I'll quit jabbing and uh, let's take a look at what I've got done so far. All right, let's take a quick look at what we're doing. So because this is going to be in flight, I haven't installed any of the uh, bay, the uh, missile bays or landing gear bays. Not necessary for what I'm doing. So this is going to be a pretty light plane. And uh, you can see I've already added the exhaust nozzle back here. I've just glued that on and I've got my straw poking out of there where I'm gonna run my acrylic rod. I've also taken a piece of plastic card and I've glued it in there. And before I close this up, I'm gonna take some of my five minute epoxy and make sure that this is nice and tight down onto the bottom part of the fuselage just to give it a little extra support. I really don't think it's gonna need it because this is gonna be really light the way I'm building it. But just in case, it's not going to hurt. Since I've got a, a totally empty inside of the plane, uh, I think that's going to be... Um, might as well do it, just in case. The, uh, the wheel bays and bomb bay doors went on without hardly any problem whatsoever. Um, there were a couple little attachment points that I had to, that I had to file down and sand down, but overall I'm really, I'm really impressed with, with how those went down. Typically when you get a kit and you try to close up the landing gear bays and, and missile bays in this case, uh, they don't fit and it's just a big pain in the butt. These fit really nicely. There's a little bit of gray in there. That's Mr. Surfacer. I just put a little bit of that in, in uh, some of the places where I'd glued them down just to clean those up a bit. But you can see there it is, um, it is nice and neat. I also went around with some sprue goo and just just to add a little bit more strength because, you know, when you hold this and you start painting it, if, um, if there's not a lot of area there for the plastic to melt and grab, uh, the, the sprue goo really does come in handy with really stiffening up those joins right there. The, uh, the top part, um, not much to it. And again, it's one of those kits where the, it's got a bottom and top half fuselage. The cockpit was real simple to put together. You just put it all together and then shove it up through the hole and glue it. There's nothing else to it. It's uh, Everything fits perfectly, not any issues. Of course, I've got my little pilot in there. He's painted, uh, really not meant for this one. I wish they would have supplied a pilot because they do offer the option with um, some of these bay doors to have it closed up, which is, you know, like the front bay doors, they have a couple different options um, to close it up. They have this one piece or they have the two piece if you want to have it open. So they do offer it. Uh, they do intend it to be in flight um, as, as an option, but they don't offer a pilot, which is kind of weird. I always get yelled at for building planes without pilots that are in flight. But uh, anyway, I threw him in there. So um, one thing that I'm going to do 
before I close this up is I've got to put the exhaust in. And this was pretty simple, just several pieces, and it does fit pretty well. There's really no fit issues that I can see. This little uh, strut right here goes along the bottom and fits right in there. And that is going to be a nice, neat fit. I'll glue it down here along the bottom, right along the sides here. I'll squeeze that in and make sure I got it in there nice and tight. And then the front half right here glues up along where the in, this, this part of the intake. And I've already test fitted. Everything's going to fit um, fine with once I get this in and glue these down. Everything's going to fit nicely when I throw the, uh, the top of the uh, fuselage on. So I'm going to get to gluing this down. And then I will uh, throw some five minute epoxy on here and then I will uh, catch you in a bit. So while I let the wings dry, I'm gonna tackle the canopy. Now, it comes with this little canopy frame, which I'll probably put in with some clear glue because I am gonna close the canopy and I'll, I most likely it, it does fit really well, so I'll probably just put some, to me, extra thin when I, when I actually affix the canopy to the plane. But uh, since this isn't going to be any, anything that's going to be structural, I'll probably just use Tester's clear glue, window glue for this. Now, I did take some Vallejo yellow ochre and I delicately went along and uh, tried to paint the raised detail on the inside that represents the explosive charge. And any little mistake that I made, I just took a toothpick and went around and scraped off the excess. It, uh, it's not the best solution, but uh, I think it'll look okay. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tint it, and I'm going to use Tamiya Smoke. And let's see, grab some right here. So this is what I'm going to use to tint it. Now I have seen some pictures where it's got that gold, uh, gold iridescent type coating on on the windscreen. I'm not going to try to duplicate that. I have seen some with it just looks like it's uh, like a dark tint. So that's what I'm going to use the smoke for. So I've got the smoke thinned down with some Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And I really don't know the ratio. I just kind of mixed it. And it's probably not going to be um, a really nice finish. But then I'm going to take some Future and come in here and coat it with future as well. So I'm just gonna slowly build up the, t the tinting, the color. And I'll probably make this just a little darker than what it should be. Just to give it more of a dramatic effect. Now you don't wanna go too much too fast because I've, I, I do have this, um, thinned with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. And what's gonna happen is it takes a little bit longer to dry than if I were to use isopropyl alcohol. So it's gonna give me a little bit smoother finish, but also um, if, I, if I keep spraying and it gets really wet, it's gonna run and really mess it up. And that's something that I'm, I'm not gonna have to, I'm not gonna be able to correct unless I just, uh, you know, wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol and, and redo it all. So I've got my air pressure turned down to about uh, eight PSI. And again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to try to get it even. Just like that. And it looks like I'm building up a nice color. It may not pick it up on camera, but I can definitely tell in person that it's uh, tinting it. And looks like I do got a couple of pieces of flurm in there. I'm just gonna have to live with it, fellas. And that's looking real nice. Almost to the point where where I got it to where I want it. So just a little bit more. 
And I'm playing with the devil here. Okay, I think I'm, I think that's gonna work. So now I'm gonna let this dry, and I may not even have to hit this with future. It may be smooth enough where I'm not gonna have to do that, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll take a look at it. So let's take a look at it. Now this is the clear plastic sprue that it came off of, and you can really tell the difference between the two parts. Now I don't think I'm gonna have to hit it with any future because I magically, <laughs> I've never had this happen before, but I got a smooth enough coat on there where it's nice and still crystal clear. Now it was a fine line getting the, uh, getting it thin enough to where I could spray on wet coats without it running. And I did have my air pressure down really low, so I just hit it right at the sweet spot. So I am really pleased with how this turned out. So there we go. I just tinted it with a little bit of smoke, and we should be good to go. So I'll go ahead, and I'm going to install this with some white glue or some testers window glue, and then I'll mask it up, and then I can probably go ahead and attach it to the fuselage. So I'll just set this aside, and um, I'll probably let this cure a little bit longer, and then I'll glue this stuff on and then uh, get it uh, attached. All right, now you can see I went ahead and put on the canopy before I masked it. I typically mask them before I put, on, put them on, but I really wanted to see what it looked like, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. So it's all buttoned down, and uh, I'll mask that after a, a little bit. But um, next what I want to do is I want to put on the wings, and they've got three posts for three separate spaces here, and it can be kind of finicky to get it on, but... Uh, they do fit really well, so I'm just going to try to do this on camera without looking like a incompetent boob. And just should snap in here. There we go. And you can see it does fit rather nicely. Now, there is going to be a seam line right along here that I'm going to have to clean up, which is going to be a bit of a pain. But uh, I think I'll be able to tackle it with some Mr. Surfacer, I hope. So I've got this on, and I'm just going to go ahead and run my Tamiya Extra Thin right along here. Just like so. It's sticking up a bit there, but... That'll be fine. So I am going to have to do some sand in here right along where it joins up because there is not supposed to be a panel line there. But I will take care of it. And then I will uh, do the same right along here. And again, there's not supposed to be a panel line. So it's going to be a bit of a pain, but uh, we'll get it taken care of. Now I didn't glue the, uh, I didn't put any glue on the posts. I don't really think that's necessary. This is gonna be such a light plane and there really aren't gonna be any forces I'm gonna have to exert on the wings. So I think just right along these joints should be, should be good enough for uh, getting, it, getting it glued down here. All right. So that's it. I'll get the other wing on. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some magnets down here to uh, glue the, uh, or to uh, fasten the vertical stabilizers on. Because I will be shipping this, I think it'll just be easier to ship if I, um, if I put magnets on there. That way I can put my rubber bands and stuff back here and, and, and not have any issues. And then uh, the new owner, whoever that may be, will just... Uh, can just slap on the, the vertical stabilizers with magnets, no glue necessary, and be good to go. So I'll get the other wing on and uh, see you in a bit. All right, what I'm doing now is there is a little, looks like camera system here on the bottom of the, uh, bottom of the plane. 
and there's a clear part that goes over it. So what I'm doing on the inside of the clear part is I'm adding some fingernail film that you've, if you've watched my SR71 video, I did the same thing on the, uh, the camera glass on the bottom of that, and it turned out to be really cool. Now this doesn't conform around curved surfaces very well, but fortunately this piece right here has a bunch of little flat facets. It's almost like a diamond. So what I've been doing is I've been cutting out little, cutting off little pieces of this and gluing it down with Future or Pledge Floor Care for the, uh, as it's known in the hob hobby world. But if you get this stuff stuck, the Future stuck in your airbrush, you know it sticks like glue. So this is going to be a perfect opportunity to, to uh, use this stuff to glue down these, this uh, nail film here. Once this dries, I'll slap it on the bottom and it's gonna give it a really cool look. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat on the inside of here, just to, to make sure I've got a nice good coat on here so these stay down where they, where they need, to, need to be. This one's moving a little bit. But I think once this dries, these should be stuck down pretty good. So I'm gonna let those dry and um, I'll let you take a look at it once I get it on there and I think it will look really neat. So now I'm gonna tackle these seam lines right along the uh, wing root here that are not supposed to be there. And the filler of choice I'm gonna use for this application is Mr. Servicer 1000. And this is really easy to wet sand. So I think this is gonna be the, uh, since I've got a lot of raised detail, I really wanna limit the amount of sanding that I'm gonna do. And um, you know, I could come in here with my CA metallic pigment, but I'm gonna have to sand a little bit harder with that, and I don't wanna have to do that. So I'm just taking my Mr. Surfacer 1000, and I'm gonna gradually build this up. Now this does shrink, so I'm probably going to take two or three applications to take care of this. Now I, I sanded down right here a little bit of a step that I had. But the other side I don't seem to have any step at all. Now the step wasn't, wasn't much, but it was enough to where I would have had to build some up. So we'll see how this turns out. But I'm just going to come in here and just start building this up right in that crease. And I'll let it dry overnight and let it shrink down to where it's going to go and come back and look at it in the morning. And uh, I will probably apply another coat and then let that dry for a good amount of time. And then I'll come back with some 800 grit sandpaper and uh, some water and I'll wet sand it down. And then I'll spray it with some more Mr. Surfacer to see where my... If I, if I still have any issues, and I'll just keep repeating that process. And hopefully, I can get this taken care of without losing any of this raised detail that I've got going on, on here. So it's just a matter of painting it in there. It's basically a thick primer is what it is. Simple as that. It is the next morning and my Mr. Servicer is dry, so I'm gonna to start to tackle that. But uh, last night I did get the, or uh, this morning I did get the uh, this little camera window on. And I want you to take a look at it. I'm pretty happy with it. It's not perfect. There are some imperfections on uh, some of that nail film had pulled up just a little bit. But once I paint the, uh, the canopy framing, I think it will be okay. So I am gonna to have to mask this off. But I've got a picture pulled up to show you what I was after. And turn my light here so you can get a better look. But there is an iridescent quality to it and I think I've captured it with my nail foil or nail film. So I'm really happy with that. Now, I've, I've debated about this. Now with the Mr. Servicer up here, I'm going to be able to sand it, and I think I can avoid sanding away some of this raised detail that they've got up here. And down here, I think what I'm going to do, and I, I know a lot of guys get wrapped up in these small little, small little details, 
And yeah, I, I, I like to make my, my plane as perfect as possible, but I pick my battles. So what I've decided to do is I'm not gonna sand this, I'm just gonna have to live with, there's gonna be um, so, some seam line running right along the bottom here. The way I'm gonna have it displayed, it's you're not gonna be able to tell unless you pick it up and, and look at it. So I'm just going to um, wipe away the Mr. Surfacer down here and just be happy with what I've got. So I can do this in a number of ways. I can use isopropyl alcohol. For some reason, there's a shortage. C coronavirus has uh, <laughs> really wiped out the isopropyl alcohol at our local stores. So uh, normally I use 91%. This is 70%. Now I could use this. Uh, you could technically use lacquer thinner, but what this is gonna, this hardware stuff is gonna eat through the plastic and I don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna opt to do is use Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. It's a bit um, less harsh on the plastic and it wipes away the, uh, the Mr. Servicer a lot quicker than the isopropyl alcohol, especially the 70%. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on here. I'm gonna come along and I'm just gonna try to wipe away the excess and leave what I can in the crack or in the seam. And yeah, it's not gonna be perfect, but I'm not gonna be having to uh, replace all that detail that I would if I, if I went ahead and sanded this, because there is just a tiny step. And so I am picking my battle, and the seam line is gonna win this one. But I think it'll be okay. Once I get it painted and once it's on the display base, you're really not gonna notice. So this is just as simple as doing this. And there's a little bit more of a step on this side. I mean, it's not a major step, but there is a slight step. So basically all this Mr. Servicer down here is gonna do is just clean up the seam line a bit. Yeah, I know, but I'm not gonna spend a day trying to it's one of those things that if you if you decide to go ahead and sand this away and then you're gonna spend a bunch of time trying to replicate the uh, the panel lines and all this little detail around here and it's probably gonna look worse than if you just left the seam line in my opinion uh, so that's that's the way I'm gonna do it now up here is gonna be a different story so I'm gonna stop the video here I'm gonna get my stuff uh, I'm gonna get some 800 grit sandpaper some water and we're gonna wet sand this now for wet sanding, I've just got a little bit of water and I've got some 800 grit pieces of sandpaper. What I like to do with my sandpaper is I like to cut it in strips and then I can take just a little bit off and I'm just gonna soak it in the water. And I like to use the uh, as little pressure as possible. It's gonna take a little bit because the 800 grit's pretty fine for this. You could come in with a 400 grit, but I'm gonna put a bunch of scratch marks that I don't wanna deal with. And it's gonna remove the Mr. Servicer quicker than I want. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna do circular motions. And it's gonna take a little bit of time because this is a, a finer grit sandpaper. And I'm just gonna slowly start to smooth out that Mr. Surfacer. Just like that, and then you can see the see the water here's dragging some of those uh, Mr. Surfacer particles out. Now I'm not going all the way up to my uh, to my raised detail. What I'll do once I get most of this leveled out and taking care not to sand any of the detail, then I'll I'll bend my my sandpaper. And I'm going to come in here. I'll probably bend it a couple times, and I'm just going to come in here, just like so and try to creep right up to that line. I can even take a small little sanding stick and come in and do the same thing. But I think I can do it with the edge of the, the sandpaper. So it's just gonna be a matter of um, just slowly sanding away the raised Mr. Surfacer because I don't want to sand away a bunch of the plastic and then have a divot. So I just want to try to get 
the Mr. Servicer level down to the rest of the, uh, the plastic surrounding it. And then once I get this done, what I'll do is I'll shoot some with an airbrush over top to see if I got any dip, dipsy doos or uh, any more seam lines, and then I'll wet sand it again and smooth it out. And I'll just keep repeating that process. Now, if there's a, is it, if if once I do that, there's a there's a big crevice or something, I can come back in with the with the brush and add a little bit more Mister Servicer with a with a brush where I need it, just kind of a a spot filling, and then. Uh, and then shoot it again and just keep repeating the process till I get get it nice and smooth. And fortunately there's a nice area here where there's no raised or uh, recessed detail that I'm gonna have to replace. I'm avoiding that with just being being real cautious with my sanding. So that's about it. I'm gonna keep sanding this and then I'll shoot it and then I'll show you what it looks like. So here we go, fellas. I've got it in primer and everything's looking pretty good. There might be a faint witness right there, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with with uh, with this stage. Now, the next big, uh, <laughs> big issue that I'm going to have to run into is masking and painting all these little, um, I guess it's tape that they use. So... I think I figured out a way to do it that's going to save me a lot of time. So on the next episode, we're going to tackle painting this beast. And uh, hopefully my method of masking these uh, taped areas are going to, is, is going to work out. So hope this uh, was somewhat entertaining and I will catch you on the next video.